I've been exploring a number of different methods for growing vegetables as part of this Red Gardens project, including comparing and contrasting a number of different approaches for managing a family-scaled garden. While each approach has a different focus or philosophy, a uniting factor in all of them is a focus on getting big yields and a wide diversity of crops out of each garden, and to do this takes work, effort, skill, and a fair amount of planning. There are a lot of labour-saving methods and techniques that can be used, but I've been thinking for some time about how I would approach growing vegetables if my main focus was to make things as simple as possible and reduce the amount of work needed. Last year I was able to expand my project to add a seventh garden to the set of family scale trials, and I decided to use this new garden to explore these possibilities. I began to devise a method for managing this garden that focused on fewer crops, easier fertility management, reduced weeding, less cultivation, and minimizing the amount of time needed to care for crops. So far I think I've been quite successful with this, and I've called it the simple garden for lack of a better name. Perhaps the easiest way to reduce the amount of work needed to manage a garden is to limit the variety of crops grown in a season. Of course this reduces the variety of vegetables that you get to eat, but it also greatly reduces the work, planning, attention, and mental effort of keeping track of the particular needs of each crop. Eliminating crops that need to be harvested regularly, such as beans, courgettes, or zucchini, also reduces the workload, as harvesting can be one of the most time-consuming tasks. For this simple garden, I thought I'd try growing only crops that could be harvested all at once at the end of the season. It would also be best if these were staple crops, ones that I naturally use a lot of, and that are high yielding and easily stored, so I ended up selecting main crop potatoes, winter squash, onions, and main crop carrots. I also decided to invest in permeable plastic fabric to cover the soil as soon as a crop is harvested, and leaving it on until ready to plant the next crop in the following spring. This would prevent soil erosion and eliminate growth of weeds over winter, which means the soil would be much cleaner and easier to prepare in the spring, it also made sense to leave this ground cover in place where the squash would grow, which would eliminate the need for weeding among the vines during the growing season. It would also help to retain soil moisture, and the black plastic may help to speed up the warming of the soil in the spring by absorbing the heat of the sun and reducing the cooling effect of the wind. I also realized that if I was going to use this ground cover, then I could use it to try out a variation of sheet composting. I could simply lift the ground cover, throw a pail of compost from my kitchen on the soil, then cover it back up again. This is probably the simplest version of composting, potentially eliminating the extra work that is involved in building, covering, turning, and spreading a traditional compost pile. The decomposition takes place in the surface of the soil, as it generally does in nature, and I suspect in many cases this is more beneficial to the soil biology and the natural fertility building processes. The thin layer of material would eliminate any anaerobic conditions, as well as uh, reducing some of the other hassles that come with compost piles, or at least hiding them from view. But with the material spread out, any heat generated by the decomposition process would not be able to build up enough to kill off any weed seeds or disease organisms. This might be one of the problematic issues with this method, but at least a plastic ground cover would make dealing with any weed seeds a lot easier. Of course not all crops will thrive with this method of composting, but squash plants will, and this sets up the starting point for a simple crop rotation. So I divided the garden into three equal areas, with squash growing in one section, potatoes in another, and with carrots and onions sharing a third section. All of the garden will be covered over the winter, but I'm only going to add compost material to the third of the garden that will grow squash the following season, which will concentrate the fertility for this hungry and aggressive crop. As each section is covered with two long sheets of plastic fabric, it is easiest to transplant the squash plants down the center between them, and they will easily spread out their roots and vines to cover the entire area. This makes it easier to continue to add additional composting material under the edge of the plastic as the squash plants grow, at least until midsummer when the vines have taken over the whole area. But by then the onions will have been harvested, so from late summer and through autumn more compost can be added to the part of the garden where the onions have been, so it makes sense to have the squash follow the onions in rotation. And once the carrots have been harvested from the other half of this section, compost can be spread over the full area for the squash in the following season. In the spring after the squash crop, the plastic is removed and any remaining debris from the compost is raked off and the section can be planted with potatoes. While growing the potatoes, the soil will end up being fully cultivated, with all of the digging that is done for planting, earthing up and harvesting of the potato plants. And after the potato harvest, seed beds for the carrots and onions can be prepared in the warmth of the autumn and then covered, greatly reducing the amount of work that will be needed in the spring. So, the design that I've developed so far involves squash being grown over sheet composting on one third of the garden. The next season this bed grows potatoes, and this is the only occasion that the soil is cultivated. The potatoes are followed by carrots and onions the next season, and then back to squash to complete the simple three-year rotation. 
Other rotations are possible, of course, and I could include other crops such as parsnip and beetroot in with the carrots, or garlic in with the onions, without changing the method too much. If enough organic matter is sheet composted before and during the growth of the squash plants, then there should be enough fertility left in the soil for the potatoes and hopefully for the carrots and onions a year later. It may be useful to try to incorporate overwintering green manures or to add another dedicated soil building rotation on a fourth bed. But this adds to the amount of work and effort needed and I suspect that there will be more than enough fertility available for this garden. With this sheet composting method, I'm realizing it's a useful place to put bulk quantities of organic materials, which could otherwise overwhelm a typical compost pile. This opens up the possibility of bringing in extra bulk material, essentially turning one third of this garden into a giant composting system. I started this garden from scratch last year, so I haven't had much of a chance to test it yet. I don't yet know what the problems with this method could be, or what the other benefits or options will arise, but these will hopefully come out in the next few seasons as this garden cycles through a few rotations, but I have been impressed so far. The sheet composting worked really well, with most of the material being incorporated into the soil by the end of the season. The squash did quite well and was easy to manage when grown over the black plastic, and I got decent yields from the onions, carrots and potatoes. In total, there was over 500 kilograms of storable crop from this 100 square meter garden in its first season, which is pretty good and on par with the intensive and polycrop gardens. But the time and effort that I put into this simple garden was significantly less than in the other gardens, even with all the digging that I did to establish the beds in the spring. Of course, I want to live off more than just these four crops and they won't last a full year in storage. But I guess this method assumes that you have another, more active garden, in which all of the greens, summer fruiting crops, and the diversity of other vegetables can be grown. This method perhaps best suits uh, parts of the garden or an allotment that is farther away that you don't need to visit so often, probably zone 3 of a permaculture design. Or if you get seasonal veg from a local market or CSA for only part of the season and wanted to grow your own produce for the off-season, then this method might work for you. There are of course other limitations, including potential issues with all of the crops that I've chosen, with blight, carrot fly, onion white rot, or a late frost being able to wipe out an entire crop. So this gardening method may be less resilient to uh, adverse weather conditions or pests and diseases, situations where greater diversity would be beneficial. But it could be more resilient from the perspective of weed management and soil fertility, or from the time and focus needed from the grower, which in my experience isn't always dependable. But I think the thing that I like most about this simple garden is that I've been able to incorporate crop rotation, weed management, composting, high yields and staple crops and a lot less work at busy times of the year. And this is all worked into an integrated system and a design that I quite like. It probably doesn't work for everyone, but I think there's a lot I can learn as I continue to develop this simple gardening method over the coming years. I had a lot of fun working out the details of this simple garden and I wonder what other methods and variations I could explore as part of this Red Gardens project. But for now I really need to focus on developing what I've currently started and to ensure that this project has a viable future which is going to take more financing than I currently have. So if you've liked this video and you found it useful and are interested in financially supporting my work, please go to my Patreon page here or in the link below uh, to find out how to become a patron. Um, any contribution helps and the more I get, the more I can try out and the more videos I can make in the future. But for now, thanks for watching.